We've got a lot of GPU news today. One thing we wanna talk about is this interview. We finally have someone actually from AMD giving a direct answer to what is going on with the coolers on the 7900 XTX in this interview at CES with PC World. Uh, but I also wanna follow up on the fact that, well, people could buy RTX 4070 Ti GPUs as of yesterday, but did they buy them? So obviously a lot of people have been very upset with the fact that the 4070 Ti is priced at both starting at $800. And so, and well, honestly, and going way up higher than that. So the question was, well, would they sell out at those prices? Because if they do, then there's no incentive to bring the price down further. Well, this morning, as of now, I mean, you guys will get this video served up to you shortly after I film it, since I do these live with no editing and all that, and just upload them. Um, I'm looking at Newegg.com. I clicked on their 4070 Ti button at the top. Look, I'll click it again live now, so this is not saving it from earlier or something like that. And uh, I sorted prices low to high just to see at what price point did these start selling out. Guys, these are not sold out. These are add to cart. These are available starting at $840, $850, going up to the $900 range. So while it looks like, at least at Newegg, the $800 models sold out, it seems like as soon as you go past that and you're looking for that markup, I mean, I don't know what to tell you guys, they seem to be sitting in stock here. This is not a, th a thorough survey of the entire world, but I've gotta say, this is a good sign for anybody who doesn't want to see price gouging like this continue. The only thing companies will really listen to is if you don't buy at this price, they need to sell at a lower price. So that's really nice to see, um, especially since they, uh, with the $800 price point, and even going a little past that, um, the, as I mentioned in my reviews, and I did publish two different big comparisons um, for the 4070 Ti, so if you missed them because I published two on the same day or whatever, uh, you could take a look at those, but I did compare it with the 4080 and the 4090 in one of the videos, and I did show that it did offer better price to performance than those cards, but again, the 4080 was already heavily criticized for providing bad values, so we need to find the place uh, where people are actually happy to buy these things. I just noticed there's like a hole in my uh, green screen uh, thing there. Let, let's fix that. Um, looking at a wider range of places with PC Part Picker this morning, again, this is showing tons of models in stock starting around this $830 to $840 price point and, uh, <laughs> and, and going from there. So anyway, we'll see what happens, but I hope that we can start getting price drops as cards don't sell out at these ridiculously high prices. Now let's talk about the 7900 XTX from AMD. First of all, a little bit of backstory on this for anybody who's missed it. So AMD's top-end new GPU, the 7900 XTX, has some cooler models that are made by AMD. So even if they're sold by other companies, they're using AMD's reference design. Whereas some other cooler models are custom designs from the board partners. The made by AMD designs specifically have been reported since launch as some people seeing some overheating issues where the hotspot temperature would reach 110 degrees Celsius and then have trouble coming back down and the card would in some situations thermal throttle reducing its performance. Now, it's been difficult to get an exact statement from AMD. So for example, uh, a few days ago I reported on this where we got the statement, we're working to determine the root cause of the unexpected throttling experience uh, experienced by some while using the Radeon 7900 XTX made by AMD. Based on our observations to date, we believe this issue relates to the thermal solution used in the AMD reference design and appears to be present in a limited number of the cards sold and uh, we're committed to solving this issue for impacted cards. Customers experiencing this unexpected throttling should contact AMD support. Okay, now since then, there's been even more headlines saying things like AMD allegedly has no more Radeon RX 7900 XTX reference GPU stock to fulfill RMA requests. Uh, this is at WCCF Tech, but I think they're grabbing that statement from Igor's lab. Um, who was uh, sharing some emails from AMD support saying that it might take 
two weeks to get the card or uh, or at the moment we're unable to replace your card and we do not have stock available in our warehouses. So that was a little bit scary, but we are now getting a statement um, specifically from AMD's Scott Herkelman to PC World. And um, the it, I, I was gonna play some of that, but I don't wanna risk getting like a copyright claim or something on the video. So I did find a videocards.com article uh, that it has at least quoted a piece of the interview. This is not the full thing. Now, who is AMD Scott Herkelman and, and why should we care? Well, one thing is, it is they are specifically from AMD. So this is an official AMD statement and he is the senior vice president and general manager at AMD Radeon. So, you know, this is coming from a very, very high level source within AMD. So this doesn't seem like some, you know, low level employee just saying something. This is a, a big, big statement to make here and they have to be careful with what they say. Now, in the end, what I mean, he said a lot of stuff there. You could watch the whole interview, but he did at the end say, it all comes down to a small batch of vapor chamber actually have, uh, have an issue, not enough water, and it's a very small percentage. That's the root cause. So he said that uh, basically this is confirming what Der Bauer stated that I reported on um, a few days ago, which is that it did seem like a vapor chamber issue. And now Scott Herkelman has said that that is the root cause of the problem and has confirmed that it's only on the made by AMD reference coolers. So if you're buying uh, a 7900 XTX, and you buy a, uh, a non-AMD reference cooler design, so one of the more custom designs, you should not be affected by this issue. And he wouldn't give a specific number <laughs> in the interview. He kept saying like a very small percentage. Now, the way he was saying it was unclear to me whether he meant it was a very small percentage of the AMD reference coolers or just that it's only a small percentage of customers because it's only the AMD reference coolers. And that would be an important distinction. Um, but he does say in the interview, just call up AMD support and they will take care of you or call up the board partners. Cause like I said, even though it's the made by AMD reference design, um, it's not, uh, you know, they're not all sold directly by AMD. So like power color, XTX, Sapphire, all, sell some models that are the made by AMD reference design. And he did say you can contact them as well and they should take care of you. It sounded like they're taking this very seriously as a you know public image and like, I mean, they, he's saying they wanna make the customer happy, but in general, it's like the company is aware this is a big um, marketing issue, right? And, and brand issue. So it sounds like this has now been communicated thoroughly that they should take care of people. If you're having this problem, you contact support and they should, fix the problem, send you a new one. I don't know. I'm not sure what exactly that means about the headlines of people being told, uh, like I said, uh, where was it? That um, they were short on stock on these things. I, I don't know exactly what's up with that, but the official AMD announcement is, yes, it's a vapor chamber issue on just the AMD reference made by AMD models. And um, that's pretty much that. Now, AMD had a lot of other stuff to say at CES, and I know that some of the bigger channels than mine have already reported on this, so I don't wanna... Uh, basically, there's like the whole press deck of the AMD announcement, and guys, there's so much stuff. I am not gonna go through all of these slides with you. Yeah, it's still scrolling, and guess what? That's the first of three big press decks with slides. Oh my goodness, there is so much information. <laughs> Uh, out of all of this. And like I said, bigger channels, Gamers Nexus, Hardware Unboxed have already done videos about the uh, AMD presentation here. But man, there was so much information. Let's pull out a few of the uh, of the more interesting things. Well, you know what, let's start with this. So I think a lot of people, myself included, are very interested in the, um, in the 79, uh, well, the 7000 series X3D CPUs. Now, for those of you less familiar with this, you're like, didn't we already get the 7800X and the 7900X and the 7950X? And for those of you even less familiar with the situation, you're like, are these even GPUs or CPUs? Because the don't we already have a 7900 XT and XTX? Is there also a X3D? Well, okay, we're talking Ryzen's now, not Radeon's. So we're talking CPUs, not GPUs. And yes, the name sounds similar and that can be 
a little bit confusing for the people who are, those of us who are like, follow this all the time, it's, it, it's we're like, oh, it's obvious, but kind of, I don't think this is super obvious to people not selling, uh, following this super close. But anyway, um, here's the big deal. In the 5000 series of processors, when we got the X3D chip, which basically means they're able to stack more cash on the CPU, uh, it gave a huge boost to gaming performance. And a lot of people were excited to see that on the 7000 series. And we're now getting the actual release date, well, not a specific date, but February 2023. So this is coming soon. Also, with the 5000 series, they only did it to the 8-core 16-thread processor, so there was a 5800X3D, but there was not a Ryzen 9. There was not a 12-core or 16-core model, and now there is. That's interesting, because then if you look at the cache amounts and follow-up articles we've seen from this, what that seems to mean is that the 12-core model there's two CCDs, right? So on the eight core chip, there's one CCD that has eight cores and can run 16 threads. When you jump up to the Ryzen 9s, uh, you have, on the 12 core model, you actually have two CCDs that are running six cores each going up to 24 threads. And on the Ryzen 9s, you have two eight core CCDs. So it's like um, two of the Ryzen uh, seven, eight cores kind of stuck together basically. Now that means that there are those two different CCDs, right? Well, what see, what's going on here is only one of those two CCDs is getting the extra cash. But since gaming workloads are very rarely even fully using six core 12 thread and, and, and uh, it's sometimes maybe eight cores, right? But you really don't need 16 core 32 thread for a gaming workload and this cash is I think particularly targeted at gaming workloads. So um, what we're seeing here is that they're putting the cache on one of the CCDs, but then if you're also using this for gaming, sorry, sorry, for productivity, where the multi-threaded workloads would come in handy, now you're not forced to choose between the Ryzen 9 or the Ryzen 7 and target just gaming, but now you're hampered in multi-threading workloads. Um, now you can have both if it works well. Now the reason why we might be worried about that and think maybe it, it wouldn't work well would be how does Windows handle the scheduling on that? Because um, it needs to make sure the game is using the correct cores that have that cache advantage. So I'm curious if we'll see any gaming performances difference, uh, differences between these models. Another big thing that we're seeing here is notice the up to five gigahertz uh, and then they're not even specifying the base clock exact here yet, um, which means that while well, this is coming out in February, it looks like this is still very much in progress tweaking the final settings. Um, whereas the 7900 and 7950X3Ds are going up to 5.6 and 5.7 gigahertz respectively. Now what I'm guessing is happening here is that I, you know how I said there's those two CCDs? Well, the reason why the, set, the, um, the X3D chips seem to have clocked lower, this was true on the 5000 series as well, they've clocked lower than their non-X3D counterparts, is that there's thermal concerns uh, when you stack all that, that, that um, cache together. Now, if these have two CCDs where one has that cache and one doesn't, I'm wondering if what we're seeing here is that the non-extra cache die is going to clock high, but I wonder if the if the uh, if the CCDs uh, with the extra cache wouldn't clock any higher than this. So I'm curious if that's what's going on here, but I haven't been able to lock down uh, if that is exactly what's happening here. That's what I think would make sense. And so I'm really curious on the gaming performance numbers here, whether the 7800X3D does perform just as fast as the other two, and their only advantage is in if you're also using it for productivity. And that's a big deal for someone like me, because with the 5000 series, I never upgraded my 5950X for gaming to the 5800X3D, which was a better gaming CPU, because I used it for 4K video editing, and I needed the 16 core 32 threads, whereas now, I could upgrade my 7700X to the 7950X3D, and possibly get the, uh, you know, uh, best of uh, both worlds in that kind of a situation. So we had a few more informational slides here. Uh, one of the most interesting ones was uh, a comparison against the i9-13900K. It's a little hard to read here because I think this is screenshotted out of the actual video presentation. 
uh, showing that in game uh, in Horizon Zero Dawn, it has a 24% um, gaming performance lead. Um, and this is at the uh, this is at 1080p. Why are we using 1080p? Because that puts you into more of a CPU limited situation than than using 4K or something like that would. At the high image quality preset, so again not ultra. Again, turning down graphic settings makes you uh, more likely to be CPU limited on a high end GPU. And they're showing Watch Dogs Legion, Dota 2, Rainbow Six Siege, all faster than the 13900K. However, as we've seen recently with AMD's GPU presentation with the 7000 series, they sh certainly are not shy about cherry picking results. That so I would say that, well, it might be true in these games. Um, we should wait and see, and also wonder if these are the only games, because like I said, AMD with their 7000 series GPU announcement uh, was a little disappointing um, on you know how reality lined up to their claims. Anyway, AMD's Ryzen 7000 X3D CPUs don't feature manual overclocking. So again, at CES, you get a lot of interviews with these companies clarifying different things. So we're getting headlines following up on, and that's, this, that's the same thing as we saw with the 5000 series X3D chip. Um, because like I said, of those thermal concerns, there's a concern that if you could manually overclock it and push the volt, voltage too high, things like that, uh, that you could actually damage the chip. It, it's that sensitive. Now, there had been statements from AMD suggesting that maybe when they got to their 7000 series generation, right, after the 5000 series, maybe they'd have uh, worked things out to where you could manually overclock, but it's looking like that is still uh, the case, that we cannot manually overclock them. And also, Microsoft should be delivering optimizations in Windows 11, because like I said, with one of those CCDs having the, this cache and the other CCD not, it's important that games um, and applications know which one to use, especially like if the one with cache doesn't clock as high, that kind of a thing. Anyway, it should be pretty interesting. And another interesting note is that Star Wars Jedi Survivor uh, is an AMD partnered game that not only supports FSR, we would assume this by this point that this would be FSR 2.1 or higher, you know, two, FSR 2 of some kind. Um, it will be bundled with Ryzen 7000 CPUs. So AMD's had some trouble moving the stock on their 7000 CPUs. I think some people have been waiting for the X3D gaming chips. And I think other people are just waiting on motherboard and DDR5 pricing to come down. But throwing in a game that people actually want, and um, you know, I liked the predecessor to this game, so I think this is a, a, a definitely a good thing to see. Bundled with, it says Ryzen 7000. It's not specifying whether it has to be the X3D chips or anything here. So we'll see more details on that um, as they come up. Now, another big thing that we saw was laptop information and CPUs as well as GPUs. I, I'm, I mean, as you can probably tell from my channel, more interested in the GPU side of things. Um, so we're seeing the 7600M XT compared at 1080p gaming to the 6600M. These are both eight gigabyte cards. So this is compared to their predecessor. So it's still an eight gigabyte uh, discrete laptop. So again, the M meaning we're talking about laptops here. And they're showing some noticeable performance uplifts over their uh, predecessor, 6600M, in a variety of games. Like I said, you know, um, <laughs> the games they select it could influence this compared to the average result that we see, but that's nice to see. Now, this I thought was a pretty interesting comparison. How about the 7600M XT compared to the RTX 3060 desktop graphics cards? And AMD is clarifying whether you're on the eight gigabyte 3060 or the 12 gigabyte 3060. Now this has not been super well publicized, although I've talked about it on my channel. Um, and I think Hardware Unboxed has done reviews on it. So it's out there. But Nvidia uh, recently, very recently released an eight gigabyte version of the RTX 3060, which has significantly cut down memory bandwidth and performs noticeably worse than the original model and just had a, a only specifies the, the memory amount as the only difference there. And no, I'm not talking about the 3060 Ti that's eight gigabyte. It's an actual 3060 that performs worse with less memory bandwidth and less total memory. Anyway, the 7600M XT is at least in these games that they are choosing. And some of these like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, uh, I know off the top of my head is well known to, f uh, you know, outperform for AMD GPUs versus what is the typical result, right? And I think that's true of some of these other ones as well. But anyway, with that in mind, 
in this selection of games that's given to us by AMD to make, <laughs> okay, so keep that in mind, it is significantly outperforming um, the other GPUs here, not in Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, however, which I'm glad they threw in here because, to my knowledge, this is a game that generally does not favor AMD. So they are being realistic and showing that there are some some games that that favor Nvidia, and it looks like this will not be the 3060 in all of those cases. But again, they're comparing the mobile chip to the previous generation Nvidia uh, desktop chip, so that is pretty cool. Um, but again, also the, the specific GPU you get, like your laptop and how much power it's able to feed it and how well it's able to cool it, has some impacts on this. So there's also the 7700S, not 7700MXT. And my understanding of this is that basically that this might be more, um, it won't allow it to go quite up to the same levels of power draw. And so there's comparing this to the 6700S and so showing their generational leap here, but they're not showing off it versus the other, you know, GPUs and games and whatnot from the other brands. Um, overall, to kind of summarize all this, ah, I'm gonna shrink even smaller. Um, you can see the overall specs, their power draw. So you can see here like the difference between the 7600M and S um, on their, their uh, this, uh, on the different um, power draws here. Did, did I get that backwards? No, wait, here we go. Uh, yeah, 7600S and 7700S. Okay, that's why I was confused for a second there. I was like, wait, I thought the S drew less power, but I was comparing to the 7600. Yeah, the 7600S uh, goes up to 75 watts versus the 90 watts here, but they're both 28 compute units. These are all RDNA3 architecture. You can look at the clock speeds. Um, all of that, so there you go if you're interested in laptops. But keep in mind, like I said, individual laptops will have different amounts of cooling available and again, different power targets, so the actual performance you get can vary pretty wildly. And that's true on the CPUs as well. Now there's a bunch of mobile CPUs coming out here and AMD's um, CPU naming scheme is getting a little bit confusing these days. So the Ryzen 7000 is not all Zen 4. If, if it has a four is as the third digit, it is a Zen 4 generation CPU, but if it has a three as the third digit, it's actually Zen 3, which is our previous generation architecture. And then if it has a two as the third number, it's actually Zen 2, which is now two generations old. Then you get into the whole core count um, <laughs> and uh, you know max cache and whatnot, all of that, this all gets kind of confusing. And this all then plays into your Ryzen 3 versus 5 and 7 and 9 and even your Athlon chips, uh, and, and where you have your U series, your HS and your U series, and then your HX series at the top end of all of this. So this all gets um, super confusing. And honestly, my channel doesn't really focus on laptops, so I don't want to spend too much longer on this. I already talked about the G mobile GPUs a lot more. Uh, but they're claiming that the 7045, so this is the new like HX line, that the high-end ones, compared to the 6900 previous generation from AMD, uh, is showing in certain games at least a very large performance jump, um, which is uh, you know good to see. Now, if they break it down into um, Cinebench numbers, their single thread performance is up 18% generation on generation up to, again, up to, not average, up to, anyway. And Cinebench um, multi-threading is up to 78% faster. So again, this doesn't mean that's necessarily the average result that we would get, it's showing that it can get that result. And again, <laughs> what that means when actual reviews get out there is a whole other thing. So um, they're also talking about their AI accelerators that are, they're now building into things. And they'd actually talked about AI acceleration quite a bit at their announcement. But like I said, there are so many things they talked about. It's just, it's just way too much, guys. It's, it's too much. I'm, I'm moving on. I think I hit the highlights for you. <laughs> All right. Um, now, other things we're seeing at CES. Uh, as rumored, Asus did announce an RTX 4080 Noctua graphics card. So if you're into uh, quiet cooling and brown fans, um, Asus and Noctua are here for you. Uh, so they're confirming that it features the same fans as the predecessor, which is the NFA12X25 PWN fans, and it will support a zero decibel mold, a mode and should be the quietest card in its class. 
So if you're into brown and beige, there you go. They have also confirmed it is a 4.3 slot cooler with an improved vapor chamber. Guys, <laughs> it's a 4.3 slot cooler. Anyway, the 4080 doesn't even draw all that much power, guys. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Um, MSI had not shown off um, uh, their uh, Gaming X Trio designs uh, up to this point. We are seeing a fully white color shroud, um, uh, white Gaming X Trio from MSI here, which was, I think, looks kind of nice if you're into the white builds. And um, with the a launch of the 4070 Ti, we are getting a new NVIDIA driver update. It has some game-ready drivers um, for Conqueror's Blade and Dakar Desert Rally. And um, uh, this, this uh, has some DLSS 3 optimizations for those games, things like that. Uh, some other fixed issues, if you are experiencing some, some of these issues, and there are still some known issues that they still need to be working on. No, uh, and, but the biggest thing this is adding in is support for the 4070 Ti, obviously, if you bought one of those. Now, um, speaking of DLSS 3 updates, one thing that NVIDIA talked about was updated versions of DLSS 3 that are already more accurate algorithms than the previous version that we'd seen in games. And as an interesting update to that, it looks like modders have already updated DLSS 3 in The Witcher 3, at least, uh, so the frame generation um, is bringing some improvements, or there's some kind of updated version of it. I haven't downloaded and tried out the mod myself, but this sounded interesting, so I thought I'd report on it. Yeah, it looks like it's the DLSS 3 uh, frame generation 1.3 update. But again, this has not been officially implemented into the game. This is through a mod, but still an interesting piece to note. Now, um, NVIDIA did announce the 4070 and 4060, as well as other laptop GPUs at, um, at, C at their CES announcement. Now, there's already some, uh, some benchmarks leaking out for these. Now, this is just a, a Geekbench OpenCL test, which is honestly not the, best, um, not the best benchmark to go off of. But if you do use it, since we have it, <laughs> I'm seeing this from videocards.com, uh, they've stacked it up against, uh, you know, the the um, thirty the thirty. Uh, I can't speak anymore, guys. Uh, the three thousand series laptops because that's what we have right out currently, and it's looking like the forty sixty is outperforming the thirty sixty, but uh, but underperforming the thirty seventy, and the forty seventy seems to be only slightly better than the thirty seventy, and slower than the thirty seventy Ti laptop GPU. However, again, this is just the Geekbench OpenCL test, which is not indicative of the full performance of the architecture. Also, different laptops have different power draw targets. So if these were like lower power draw versions up against higher power versions from the previous generation, that could explain a lot too. So I'm just gonna move on because I don't think we should dwell on something that's so wishy-washy on what it actually means. Now, um, how about Intel? Okay, so Intel Arc GPUs, there's been so many rumors of these things getting canceled, wound down, uh, so much going on here. Well, in the rumor mill now, we have Red Gaming Tech over on YouTube, and I'm finding this reported in an article from videocards.com, all my links will be in the description, um, has shown what appears to be a legitimate uh, looking, at least, Ro product roadmap from Intel. Now, what we don't know is when uh, when this product roadmap was created and how out of date it could be. Because remember that Intel's Arc GPUs came out way later than they originally wanted, right? So where are they in their actual, uh, you know, in other words, will this line up with reality? Who knows? But at least whenever this was created, it looks like they were planning in quarter one, quarter two, maybe going into quarter three of, of 2023, some sort of an Arc Alchemist a GPU at 150 watts with six gigabytes uh, that we haven't seen launched yet. Um, also, it looks like going into possibly as soon as quarter three, 23, an Alchemist Plus ACMG 2075 to 100 watts, is that like an Alchemist refresh or update, right? And then going into quarter one 
of 2024. Oh, did my voice just crack? I swear I went through puberty a long time ago. Anyway, uh, quarter one, 2024, <laughs> we're seeing Battle Mage, which would be the actual next gen products, early enabling in quarter one. Um, going into quarter two, it looks like an actual 225 watt part and a little bit after that, a 150 watt part. So like I said, uh, lots of uh, grains of salt here. Is this even real? If it is real, when was it made? How up to date is it? And then even if this is real and up to date, will they actually hit these these targets? Because like I said, Alchemist shifted uh, pretty far off of their original targets. And the last thing I'll leave you with is the PlayStation 5 has been reported to have a design flaw that might kill the console if you use it vertically. To be clear, uh, what this seems to be being reported is that if the if it's working properly, there's no issue. But apparently some number, and I have no idea what the percentage is, of the, um, of the cooling solutions end up leaking. And the, like the liquid metal inside moves. And if the console is horizontal, this doesn't cause a big, big issue. But if it's vertical, then the liquid metal moves and will no longer um, be uh, cooling properly. And I'm seeing this report at WCCF Tech, but it looks like it was originally coming from, uh, from, from this, uh, which is um, YouTuber user The Coder uh, can show this design flaw problem in action, as well as further explain the reason behind the PS5 design flaw. And I hope all of you have an excellent day.